Yo guys, how's it going? Mad Gaz here, and I'm back once again with another tutorial for you guys who have downloaded Mod Tools yesterday. This is my tutorial too, and we are going to start building up this area we have in the tutorial level to make it somewhat more usable for you to fight the zombie horde. Now let's go ahead and see if we can get 500 likes on this video to share it around so everybody can see how to make these awesome zombie maps. So yesterday we launched up our tutorial level we got things working I did a little quick play test and you could see things were working but now you want to add some more detail to this thing instead of just having like weird pillars in the sky and stuff like that let's go ahead and make a simple room and box some of these areas in so they're visibly playable and look a lot cooler so to do that we are now going to create some simple brushes to make areas and rooms now you can see over on the right hand side here we have our 3d no sorry our top down view our 2d view which is the grid view and this is shown a top down view of our map so you can see we have this block here which is that one there with the gun on it this block here which has got our mystery box spawn point on it uh this one here which has got our zombie spawns and the other wall over there which has got our perk machines pack a punch and power switch next to it just like that over there so what we are going to do now just going to create a simple room that you guys can spawn into and run around into and kill the zombies in as well just to give a little bit more dimension so all you want to do now well the best way i want to do things is i use the cork brush when doing it but since this is a massive open area i'm not going to use it. i'm just going to find a simple texture now what the cork brush does so if you go down to your texture menu on here and type in cork or if you spell it correctly then yeah you will see this brush right here now what you do is you draw everything out in a cork so you cork everything out and then in game mode it will be an invisible wall as of such now we don't want that we want visible walls so usually what you would do is if you're drawing out a room i like to draw mine in at the top down view first so what i do is i'll zoom in i'll change the grid size on mine to a nice simple size so we're going to grid eight so nice nice simple blocks easy enough for you guys to draw and simply click with the right mouse button and draw a block on your grid view and you see there we have the block drawn out on to the 3d view now you want to make that higher or lower you can simply click and drag on this view to make it higher or lower but you're not entirely sure if you're going to be cutting through floors or going too high so the best way to do that is on the right hand side of the grid view here hold down control and press tab on your keyboard and it will change your views so we can see the side view now we know that that is cutting through the floor but if you want to see how far through the floor it is cutting simply hold shift on your keyboard and click on the floor in the 3d view and you see there it lights up the whole floor we still got our wall selected where drawn and it shows you where the floor actually begins and ends so we know that that area here is the floor so we click back off that holding shift and click on the floor we can now drag our wall to the bottom of where the floor is just like so now that's not a very good place to place a wall is it now so what you want to do is you can and if you click off this just as a quick tip if you accidentally somehow click off it by pressing escape escape will let go of that brush that brush will be cemented in there for future use if you want to re-click things again just hold in shift and click on any brush so you can click anywhere in the map by selecting it as long as you've got the shift key holded you will select all the brushes now the best way i like to do things when i'm making a map i sometimes realize that i've literally like balls things up and i've got something selected and i've dragged it around without realizing it once you've moved the thing you need to move so let's say for instance i'm trying to drag this now i'm dragging that on that screen there and it, oh i'm actually moving this one as well i didn't want to move that so the best way to go around this is i'll undo that and simply just press escape so you know you've got everything deselected then reselect the one that you want but that's just something in case you make any mistakes so we're going to drag this wall into a suitable location where we want it to actually work so we'll just simply go to your top view again by hit control and tab and we're going to drag this over here using the right mouse click button on your mouse and we have got that dragged there we can push that back to line up with this wall you see it doesn't quite line up with that wall but that's okay that doesn't matter we want the height so we go back and shift and tab again and we can drag up the height just like so like that now we've got a wall that wall will not spawn in game if you go ahead and press f9 on your keyboard you'll see game view shows us that that wall does not exist so simply press f9 again to get out of game mode and we're going to texture this wall 
where you'll texture all of these surrounding walls and stuff like that. So the best way to do it is, I may just leave all this corked so we only ever see the wall from this side. If you ran around the side, it would be invisible. So simply hold down Shift and Control on your keyboard and click on the surface you want to retexture. Now with that selected, go into your texture column and search for a simple wall color. So we're gonna search for brick. We'll just search for bricks, just like that. And we brings up lots and lots of brick textures. And I'm just gonna go with a simple dirty red brick. And then once we do that, we've got that selected, we can simply press escape on our keyboard and that has that wall painted with a dirty red brick color. Now the back part is still a cork, so if we press F9 again on our keyboard, you'll see, you can see through it, till you come around to there and you can see it. And that saves on rendering times in your map. So it has not got to render every surface, it just has got to render the surface that you are originally going to see. So we'll go ahead and click out of that one. And then all I'm gonna do is I'll select the face of this block again with a shift and control and paste the same texture on that since it's already selected by double clicking and it should line up fairly well. Yep, that's a pretty good match, it lines up pretty good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same and create a little box room around our player spawn and our little areas and I will get back to you in a second. Right, there we go, I have added in all the walls around this area and I'm gonna go ahead and retexture these. So once again, I'll press Shift and Control, Shift and Control to select these faces over here and double tap on, double click, sorry, on my texture, which I wanted to replace as we have a little bit sticking out there. You can just simply highlight that. Uh, I think I've got a little piece on that one. And that is simply that, we have textured that. Oh, we got that one sneaking through there. And now we need to add a little piece into here. So like before, we are gonna go into our top down view and we can see that this wall is here and that wall is there. And we gotta make a join in between and make a bridge gap over the top of this. So simply what I'm gonna do is click and hold over that and drag. But as you see there, it's dragged through the entirety of that zombie spawn, which is not good. So simply go into your control and tab on your views again, and we can see, we can just drag that up to the top of there, like so. And we have got our very first zombie spawn area. But you're thinking, well, hang on, how are we gonna spawn into this? Well, we have the zombie spawn points, uh, sorry, our player spawn points outside of the map. And this one here shows you the size of the player so you can get everything measured up the size. We have our spawn points. These ones here are where you will spawn in the game. And the yellow ones are the ones when you die where you will respawn once again. And the best way to do this is I just keep everything together. So what I'm doing now is I hold in shift and I collect all of these together. Holding in the shift key on my keyboard. Select an all. Select the red one there. Select this one here. And then what I'm going to do is press control and tab on the keyboard till you get to the top down view, just like that, and simply hold over the top of one of these on your con on your mouse, sorry, with the left click, and simply just drag these into our playable area that we have just created, like so. And that is a simple playable box area that we have just created. We go ahead now and we can test this to see if it actually works, or you can actually continue on, and if you really want to go further, we can change this into a darkened zombie map. So let's do that now quickly. It should take us moments to create a darkened zombie map. So the best way to do this is simply on your radiant screen, right click on the bar up at the top over here and go into entity list. And this brings up all of the objects, all of the features, all of the items that are in the game right now. And what we're gonna look for is volume sun. Now that is gonna change our lovely skybox into the skybox you see in the giant. So volume sun, highlight volume sun, you'll see it shows up, we have selected it on this screen as well. If you zoom out on your grid view, you can see it has selected it all the way around the map. It is all nicely selected. And what we want to do now is press N on your keyboard and it brings up our volume sun KVP like property window. And the best thing I wanna do now is turn this into a zombie looking map, because we don't wanna break deal with a zombie map. So simply what I do is change the light state on this. Now light states, will get a little bit more of that later on because they're playing the different factors of using the power switch and stuff like that. So what we are gonna do is simply click on default day and then these three lines here to browse for a new skybox. And simply what you wanna do is just select ZM factory and OK. And you'll see there, everything goes all crazy, crazy lights. So what you need to do now is right click on, the, sorry, left click on this little diddly here to drop down into the camera view. Hang on, we can close that entity window right there. So what you wanna do is now, once you've closed the entity window, is click this line here, get the thunderbolt, click that, just like before on the very, very first 
to it should now build up your lights just like that now we have a dark and gloomy map you think well you can't really tell us dark and gloomy so the best way to do that press f9 on your keyboard and boom you have what is a dark and gloomy zombie map granted there is no lights into here so what we can do now is add in a simple light all you need to do is press f9 on your keyboard and bring up your entity browser window on the bottom here simply by going to the top and right clicking and selecting entity browser and it should pop up anywhere and just place that anywhere in your screen i've got mine set up the way i like it and what we're going to do is add in a simple light so we can kind of see a little bit brighter so go down to unsorted and scroll down till you find light and all this is is a light entity and what you want to do is left click on this and drag it over to your map and you'll see there there is a light. That's a light in the room. It's a very, very, very primitive light, and it's really, really bright. But that's a light. And what you can do now is with this selected, press N on the keyboard, and all you want to do is scroll down these properties here. You can change any of these, and it'll give you a different light settings and such like that. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop the stops down to about 5, and you see automatically it's softened up the light a little bit there. And then I'm going to increase the air radius to 500. Simply by just changing these values changes that light, and boom. We have that there and you can see now if we move around on our plain view we can see we have a light inside the map it's a little bit brighter a little bit more colorful and now what you've done is you've created a room we've changed the skybox we've added a light and now we need to do is rebuild the lights once again by pressing that thunderbolt and we can then try this out inside of black ops 3 so now that has been done that's complete we've got a skybox if you press f9 on your keyboard you'll see what this map is going to look like once you spawn into it and it looks pretty cool just for a simple simple taster of black ops zombies so now we've done that go ahead file and save this and then we go back into our mod launcher right here we have our zm tutorial ready to go simply click compile light and link untick the run button and click build to build your map and once it's just finished building you'll see that now changes from cancel to build processing time is being done simply untick all of these like we did in the first video select run click build and it should boot into black ops 3 into our brand new map you have just created and there we go we've spawned in now we have got something that looks like a kind of similar playable map and that is a simple basics of how you start creating rooms inside of radiant you see we are at the walls obviously you'd make walls different than that you wouldn't just make basic square walls kill the zombies the zombies will be spawned from there and they will be spawned from the window spawn as well we have a gun buy on the wall which you can go over and buy which is a lovely little addition so you can kill some zombies and you simply go along those routes like i was showing you building walls with the blocks texture the blocks and then you can drop in some lights just to give you a little bit more light i will show you in the next video how to add in a lot more nicer detailed lights and stuff like that and to get the mystery box working as well because we need that mystery box at the moment it's just a dead little area there with some breeze blocks that does nothing we need the mystery box working and some lights working so that'll be the next video this one has been simple how to add some blocks to shape up your area if you did go on to enjoy this and you found it informative and it actually did help you out with your mapping on Radiant, please hit that like button. It really, really helps me out. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe and continue to dropkick your grandma.